I, d I gave advice a few years ago, which apparently got noted because they wrote it down on some sign like this on the walls. <laughs> it was to young people, identify the best, in your opinion, identify the best lighting design firm or, or people or person and then go to work for them. Never mind where they are or what the money is. Because you need the, when you're young, you, you need to learn from the best and have a high standard set for work so you develop a sharp edge on your knife. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to be the best. So I always wanted to try to be the best, work for the best, work for the best. Greetings. Greetings. How are you? Very well. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming into the VLDC booth. What do you think of the booth? It's big. <laughs> you guys are famous. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you guys, um, no, you guys, you got in, uh, you were just saying on, on Saturday morning, took Sunday easy, and on Monday morning you were here for the judging. All day long. All day long. Tell us a bit about that whole process. Um, from your experience, how does that match well, up with what you've done? Well, I've been, uh, in my life, I've been on about uh, six, maybe seven jury panels. And it's always a work in progress. Yeah. This time, we had uh, on your own judging uh, online uh, in December. Yeah. And then they came to a finalist list. And so we looked at the finalists all day yesterday and, and in what I thought was a, a brilliant addition and can really only be done in a in a regional setting like this uh, we interviewed that's not the right word we had presentations and were able to ask questions yeah from most of the uh, applicants and, and that was were, great they were there yeah they came <laughs> into the room we had uh, 10 or 15 minutes with each with yeah. each one yeah and that made a big difference because then you can ask questions about the, what you see in the pictures well, and yeah. the text and yeah. And they were able to present in their own voice yeah. uh, their projects. It was great. We, um, we had the pleasure of interviewing Lauren Dandridge earlier, and I asked the same question. And uh, you know, she said sort of along the similar lines where it was really nice to also have yeah. the, the, you know, the, um, the designer there to be able to, to talk about the project and get sort of their take on why they made certain decisions. Because you can have a nice project right up. You know, you can write it all nice, and it's a bit different to then actually get inside why, why they made certain decisions, right? That's true, yeah. <laughs> it, it was good fun, and a and, uh, nice group of judges got along very well. Yeah. Good uh, group dynamic. Yeah. Now, we also um, know that you talked at ThinkLight earlier this I've morning. I've been busy today. You've been pretty busy, pretty active. Um, now, Lauren talks um, about she, her keen... She, she was the boss. She was, <laughs> she the, was boss the boss of our <laughs> panel. Uh, and, Lauren, um, Lauren uh, kicked it off, and then uh, there were six of us, I guess, and everybody did a 12, 15 minutes with a slightly different uh, vector, you might say, on the topic, <laughs> yeah. which was really fun, really good. I, I learned a bit. And, and um, so when... What did you sort of take away from that, or what did you feel um, you contributed to that conversation? Well, I contributed a feet on the ground, practical experience uh, point of view, and distilling that experience uh, to address the topic. So, my subtopic, you might say, was put the people first, the people first in design. Yeah. And that speaks to all the issues of responsibility, sustainability, and good design, uh, joy and, and, and beauty yeah. and design. Uh, it speaks to uh, uh, technology issues. Mm. So when you're doing a project that's based on a master plan developed five years before, the technology has changed yeah. since the master plan was written. So we face that all the time in the real world. So I was able to weave a, a little talk about that using some projects as examples. Yeah. 
you're, you're no stranger to, to the virtual lighting design community and the lighting community at large. Um, and you um, contributed not long ago, actually, with a talk on the night sky. Um, which I thought was a brilliant right. talk. Well, and I don't know about brilliant, but actually last year I did a longer version of that. Oh, okay. And that's when uh, uh, Martin came to me and he said, would you do a, a shorter version? Yeah. And one thing we learned in pandemic was that the 20 minute format is really good. Yeah. It's a really good teaching format and also everybody will sit for a 20 minute talk if it's engaging. Yeah. The problem with 50-minute talks is it reminds us of school, and we didn't all like school. <laughs> anyway, so the talk I did for you uh, on uh, was called Consider the Dark, and it's just 20 Consider minutes. Consider the Dark, yeah. yeah and, I, and I quite like it. What I um, really enjoyed when I just ducked in earlier to listen to you being interviewed by our fellow Real DC <laughs> founder, Martin Lupton, was um, one of the things he asked you was, I think something along the lines of what you feared or, or something like that. And you said that you, m more to the point that you wanted to surround yourself with people who were smarter than, than you. That's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> and I feel like that is something that you are offering to the members. And you know, we have a lot of young people who are up and coming lighting designers in, in this community. Um, who can surround themselves by people who are very well experienced and who are smarter than them. And I feel like you are able to do that for others. Well, I hope so. Remember, in my career, I've seen 20 lighting design firms worldwide become 2,000. Yeah. And, okay, is it really 2,000? Maybe not. Maybe it's a few hundred uh, commercial, ongoing, professional enterprises. But... If you look at that survey that was it Mondo Arc puts out, yeah. two thousand, almost two thousand this year. Yeah. All right, that's pretty. That's a pretty impressive growth rate. <laughs> uh, and I do think that surrounding yourself with smart people is a good plan. Absolutely. So, in that sense, you've you've got a bit of an experience about you know you're quite familiar with the, the virtual lighting design community. Um, what has been your experience, you know, what, what could you sort of um, maybe say from your point of view how it's been um, being part of what we do? Well, it's been, I think, fun, engaging and worthwhile from, from my perspective to contribute a little bit, I'd like to support the idea. Yeah. I think we're all around the world and we certainly, one thing we take away from the three years of lockdown yeah. is that uh, staying connected to your friends and your colleagues is important and worthwhile mm. and mm. rewarding. Yeah. So I've made a lot of friends over a lot of years and I don't want to lose them. No, no, that's right. <laughs> and um, I realized that um, you know, there, there might be a few people who may or may not have necessarily got to know who you are as, as a person is there anything that you haven't already shared that you know you could say um, lets people know who, who you are, you know where, where you've come from, you know your journey through through lighting, um, you know any advice that you might want to give to to young lighting designers? Uh, Martin asked me almost the same question an hour ago. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> look, I really wanted to do this thing, and I still do. Yeah. Um, the best advice would be to do something else, like your parents wanted you to do, probably. <laughs> uh, that would be good advice. On the other hand, I really wanted to do it, and, and that made it possible for me, but I'm also lucky. And the period of time, uh, changes in the industry over my career, yes. could I have lived at a better time in lighting? I, I don't know, I can't imagine. No. And could I be luckier? No. no. So I worked for the best people. Yeah. And they were smarter than I was, and learn a lot from them. Yeah. And surround yourself with good, hardworking people. Yeah. So, I, d I gave advice a few years ago, which apparently got noted because they wrote it down on some sign like this on the walls. <laughs> yeah. It was to young people identify the best, in your opinion, identify the best lighting design firm or, or people or person, yeah. and then go to work for them. 
never mind where they are or what the money is. Yes. Because you need the, when you're young, you, you need to learn from the best and have a high standard set for work so you develop a sharp edge on your knife. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to be the best. No. So I always wanted to try to be the best, work for the best, work for the best. Uh, I don't know, that's just general life advice, I guess. <laughs> well, there's a bit of an overlap, I suppose, with, yeah. with life at Boss. I, I also heard you say earlier about you not having any hobbies. I don't have a lot of hobbies. <laughs> Is that because you, you love what you do so much? I, unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, with uh, going back to a family between trips, with working on projects, for example, I made over, in my life I've made from New York or other U.S. destinations, over 250 trips to Hong Kong alone. Yeah, which is hard on a, on a family. It's hard on everything. Yeah. I wouldn't trade it for anything. No. So I have some collections of friends in various cities and we get together and talk. I have intellectual conversations on many topics. Yeah. I say intellectual because you have to read something before you go to have the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Not because we're breaking ground on big ideas, but my, my point is, I'm not a fisherman. I don't you know, tie flies or have, hop I don't have hobbies or play games. I don't play card games. I don't gamble. Uh, I just don't have any hobbies. I travel, I take a few pictures, yeah. I like to write, yeah. <laughs> I like to read. Okay, fantastic. Charles, I thank you so much for um, coming down and having a chat with us. It's been fun. I tried to um, extract a bit more of the <laughs> things that you might not have already talked about and um, get a bit of an inside look. Um, but Well, yeah. you're doing a good thing here. I, I think this is connecting the world of lighting designers together in a, what is a, a new and unique way, you're the first to do it and with any success. Yeah. And so I'm glad to support that. Wish you well. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, will do. <laughs> See ya. It's my hobby. It's your hobby. <laughs>